Mistakes to avoid if you are served with a restraining order. There are some big mistakes out there to avoid. Are you interested in that area of the law? Have you been served with a restraining order? If so, this is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Freyrier, and I'm a lawyer in Washington State. I have a law firm that's been defending people charged with crimes and restraining order matters for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. There's not a lot of information out there. So let's talk about the big mistake that you can get, that can happen to you, and that you might make if you're served with a restraining order. What is a restraining order? Well, a restraining order is where somebody has went to court and told the court that you've done something wrong. There's domestic violence restraining orders, there's stalking restraining orders, um, there's harassment restraining orders, there's sexual assault uh, restraining orders, and in the law they're called protection orders. But here we call them restraining orders because that's what most people in the public call them. But they went to the court and the court has issued a temporary order saying you can't have contact with the protected party, the petitioner. You can't go certain places. You might have to turn over things as well. And um, what happens if you violate that order, it's a crime, right? It, for the most part, it's a gross misdemeanor crime and violation of the order can be a felony crime. So you might guess, you might guess what I'm gonna say. What's the biggest mistake? And I see it way too often. It's not reading the order, right? You get the order, you're in shock. You've known this person for years. Maybe it's your spouse or your boyfriend. And first thing you wanna do is call them up and say, what is this? You know, what have you done? Why did you do this? You know, you're so angry about getting this and you're so shocked. And so you call them up and guess what you just did? You just committed a crime. And when they report that to the police, that officer who served you, they're coming back and you're getting cuffed and you're going to jail because you didn't read the order. So when you get that order, it's gonna be several pages and you need to read it very carefully. And there's certain things you're gonna to wanna to look for. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to look for are what are the restrictions? What boxes are checked and what boxes aren't checked? Am I prohibited from going to a certain place? Am I prohibited from going to a workplace? Are there children on the order? Um, am I not allowed to surveil the petitioner, um, the person who asked for the order? Um, do I have to like turn over control of a vehicle temporarily? What is it that I have to do? Do I have to live, live, live my own, leave my own home? And if you were living with the person, you probably do have to leave your own home and you can't even go back there unless the order says that you can call for a police escort to get some personal items. So you need to read that order. So first you're gonna read the restrictions. The second thing you're gonna read is you're gonna read what court it's in, right? What court issued this order? Was it King County Superior Court? Was it a district court? Even some municipal courts can issue orders nowadays. And why you want to know what court issued it is so you can know where it is you have to file a response, right? And that's the next thing you need to look at. When is a new hearing set? Because the petitioner went and got this order without any notice to you. And that's how the law works. It's called an ex parte restraining order. And um, then there's a date, which is usually two weeks after the order was issued where you get a chance to go to court and tell your side of the story to try to say this order shouldn't exist. And it's usually gonna be less than two weeks away from the time you get the order because it takes some time for you to be served with the order, right? The order is issued on April 1st, the hearing might be April 15th for the full order, but maybe you don't get served until April 10th. So you don't have a lot of time. So you're gonna read the restrictions, you're gonna try to follow them even if they're unfair, you're gonna just accept that's the temporary reality you're in. You're gonna see what court it's in. Then you're gonna see, hey, when is the court date that I have to uh, appear to tell my side of the story? And finally, I think you're gonna wanna look, want look for some information. Is it by Zoom I need to appear? Uh, do I have to appear in person? And it's gonna vary on that order. So what's the next most common mistake? The first common mistake was not reading the order. The next most common mistake is not doing anything about it, right? When you get served with the order, you're also going to be served with the petition. That's a copy of the document that the petitioner filed with the court to get that temporary order against you, right? You need to do something about it. And so you're gonna look at that petition and see, hey, what is this all about? Now, don't be calling up the petitioner to yell at them about it. That's, that's gonna be a crime probably. 
but you need to look it over and decide what to do. So the second most <laughs> common mistake is not doing anything. I'm just gonna ignore it. I don't really care. I don't wanna see them again later. Look, you don't want somebody else to have the power to get you arrested if they just say they contacted you. So it's important you try to do something about it or at least reach out to an attorney to try to help you make a decision if you should do something about it. And if so, how, okay? Um, and we have a plenty of videos on this channel about uh, doing uh, responding to restraining orders. We also have restrainingorderplaybook.com where you can download an ebook about it. I hopefully uh, my team will put some uh, some links to the other videos up here, um, and um, you can take a look at it. So I think that's the second big mistake. And you know, just pop into my head, a third mistake is uh, not reading all the paperwork. Right. So you've got that order. That's a temporary order. You've got the petition. Sometimes there's another order in there. There's something called an order to surrender firearms. And if there's an order to surrender firearms, you're probably in the superior court, and oftentimes they're gonna set a whole separate hearing that's different from the, the hearing about the permanent order uh, that you have to go to for sure. But if there's an order to surrender firearms, you've only got so many days to surrender the firearms, and then you have to provide proof to the court that you did so, and sometimes there's another court hearing to talk about that. So read all the paperwork, look at it all. It's really, it's, it might be all wrinkled up and it's nothing you want to deal with, but you've got to read it all, and if you don't know what it means, you know, reach out to an attorney. We also have a video about what happens at a, uh, at a weapon surrender hearing, and we can link to that here. Um, so what, what you need to do is read the order so you don't make a mistake and get arrested, respond to it in some way, and you're gonna need to f uh, follow uh, advice of an attorney, look at the other videos re on this channel. You know, response usually means in writing, and there's a whole lot of do's and don'ts about that. You can also download that playbook. And finally, read all of the paperwork. So, so many times people just read part of it, and they say, I didn't see that, and now they're getting held in contempt for not turning in their firearms, or even worse, they're getting charged with a crime for not turning in firearms that they were ordered to turn in. And if you don't have any firearms to turn in, you still have to do something. You have to file a declaration of non-surrender. You can't just ignore it. So it sort of all works together. You gotta really urgently pay attention to everything, and, and, and you're not gonna panic, but again, avoiding the mistakes is just sort of not taking it seriously enough is the biggest sort of overall arching a symptom of when we sort of make mistakes in these restraining order cases. So I hope you found that useful. I've covered it quickly. You can tell I'm passionate about this area. I think the law is, is so rigged against respondents. I just don't think it's fair for the most part. Uh, yes, people need protection, but there's lots of misuses of the system too. And uh, it's just getting more and more uh, of, of an epidemic of how many of these orders are being filed. And we see so many mistakes being made and it really, it really upsets me. So if you found this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. And more importantly, if you got served with a restraining order, if you got some questions, if you need some help, feel free to reach out to my office. We've been doing this type of thing for more than 20 years. We have a whole team that handles restraining orders. And while they're not our favorite things to do, we do think we do them pretty well. And if it makes sense, we'll listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we'll do everything we can to be there for you. Thank you.